Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody. Welcome to the kickback where we do just that. Kick back and talk. And you're listening to the first inaugural episode of the kickback. Who am I? Well, if you don't know my voice by now, because I know a lot of y'all have heard my voice around campus and y'all, I have a very distinct voice. I am Ronald Davis. Uh, I used to go by the Black Flamingo squaw, squaw, when I was on WB, okay? I'm trying to change my name, trying to find a new name, see what fits me. I'm thinking about Lamo with an E-A-U-X. Thank you, Prince. Oh, for that. goodness. Oh, uh, but I'm here today with two guests. Who am I here with? Who's right, that right there? It's my right. Well, I don't have such a catchy introduction like DJ or uh, D- this jockey, Lamo, whatever, uh-huh. over here taking the E-A-U-X, like how he, we do it down here in New Orleans. Oh, I love it. Oh, it's your girl, Princey. You know, I don't have anything super special, mm-hmm. you know, just... Princey, you, you know. You ain't PW. Oh, well, you know, the, one the... time I tried doing the whole DJ PM if I really wanted to be a DJ, DJ PM at night. What's Does that make any sense? What's the, what's the D- DJ step for? PM. Oh, so my middle name is Monet. Oh, we got three of y'all now. So DJ PM. Mm. So maybe I should just rock with that. But mm. for now, just call me Princey. Okay, just Princey. Nice to meet you, just Princey. Who is it on the oh. other side of the table? Hello, guys. I am Tyler. I wish I was as interesting as you guys, but um, my name is just a common name, you know, Ty. Tyler, that's what you do with that, you know. But, yeah, hey, guys, what's up? Well, it was good. It was good. Welcome, Tyler. Woohoo! Woo! Yeah. Uh, so, well, I wanted to talk to y'all t- today. Um, really just want to get back into the flow. This is the beginning of the semester. Uh, for me and Princey, it's our senior year. Woo! woo! 2019, you know what I'm saying? 2019, 2K19. But uh, first off, I want to talk to you, Tyler, because you're actually a transfer student, right? Yes, I am. So tell me where you came from. I came from a small school in Kentucky, to be specific, Campbellsville, Kentucky, like Campbell's Soup. (laughs) Um, It's a small school in Kentucky, uh, an hour and a half from both big cities, Louisville and Lexington. Um, Yeah, it was probably never heard of it. But I'm sorry, I, I mean, I've never been to Kentucky, so I don't know what's out there. Most people haven't been to Kentucky. I've, I've <laughs> only not. seen, what's, uh, what's that movie called? The, Wh- the Wizard of Oz. That's oh, all I know about Kentucky. Isn't that Kansas? You, you, that yeah, is Kansas. So that is you're Kansas. a little bit wrong on that one, Ron. <laughs> so it shows how much I know about Kentucky. Um, so what school was it that it was? Campbell's. Campbellsville. Campbellsville. Yeah. Uh, and it's yeah, small like school. Campbell's Soup. Yeah, Campbell's Soup. Campbell's Soup. All right. So Campbell's Soup University. What made you make the change, Tyler? Uh, I'm a track runner. I run track. So I came down here because I got a track scholarship. So mm. I, ran, I ran track basically my whole life. I ran track since third grade. So track, track just consumes me, you know. Like, I've been running from everything. I've been, because I'm from Brooklyn, New York, mm-hmm. you know. So that sounds weird coming from New York all the way to Kentucky, all the way to New Orleans. But I like to travel and also, like, I'm gonna say like being in new places, you know. Okay, so I'm gonna start with there. So you're from Brooklyn originally. New York, BK all day, you know. I'll say. So then you went to college in Kentucky. Yeah. And then you came to New Orleans. Yes. Okay. I didn't. I didn't know like track and all that kind of stuff was really that big in New York. I feel like I don't know. I only know about the arts in New York. True. That's what like when I was little. It's like people. You need an outlet, you know, to really mm-hmm. get out of New York. Because if you don't have anything to do, you'll stay stuck in New York all your life. And I didn't want to stay in New York. Not that New York is a great, not a great place, but I really need to get out because I felt like I need to see the world and actually know what's out there. Because New York has a lot of stuff, but it won't. It doesn't have everything. Mm-hmm. You know? Okay, so you, so do you think that like gentrification is like a big thing oh, right yes. now? Oh, of course, wow. everywhere. Um, I don't know if you know the certain parts of Brooklyn, but there's this place like Brownsville. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you ever heard of it, but it's like a very bad place. There's, no one wants to live there. If you live there, then Sorry, but... South <laughs> the West Bank. Yeah, but it's what? been junky. We'll get to it. Uh-huh. <laughs> no, 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 no. We're not going to shake the West Bank. No, we're not going to do that. Wow. But, yeah, it's been gentrified, and you like that's the last place you would think has been gentrified, because it's such a... Mm. I don't want to say such a horrible place. I don't want to keep bad-mouthing it, but that's a bad place. So then where are families going if they're not in New York? If they're not in Brownsville, if they're not in the Bronx, like where are these families who've been there for a long time going? Are they going to Jersey? Nah, um, 
that's a hard question. I really don't know to tell you the truth. Cause like, if if they don't if they kick you out, not kick you out, but you know, kick you out, mm -hmm. then it's just like either you go somewhere else in Brooklyn or go like to Queens or Manhattan. Well, no one goes to Manhattan. Either Queens or Staten Island or the uh, Bronx, or you just stay there. Or find somewhere else in Bronzeville. You know what I mean? Mm. So, yeah. It's interesting. I don't really hear your accent. But I'm, I'm sure... Say, I, yeah, I, 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 I don't... People, people really say that I don't have a New York accent. It comes out in some words. Like my friend, when I, I say talking. Uh, uh, yeah. Mm, yeah. Mm, I say talking. Mm, like, what are you talking about? But, yeah. I'm going to say, I bet, someone, I bet someone gets you mad and you get hyped up. Oh, it's going to come out. Yes, yes. You'll hear all the slang, all, I'm everything. A, I, feel, I realize that people get mad. That's when their true accents come out. Right. Mm -hmm. Prince, I'm still waiting for yours to come out. My accent will not come out. I will leave my uh, home come on. disclosed. Wait, where are you from? I will not say until I'm ready to diss Ron real quick. She's Ron from is the not. West Bank. <laughs> I am not from the. Okay. I'm from the West <laughs> Bank. And yeah, okay, that's fine. Whatever. But I'm from New Orleans, Louisiana. Okay? All be right. Proud, be proud. I'm I'm Love proud of New Orleans, so, yeah. but I'm not gonna say the West Bank. Nobody knows the West Bank. I'm gonna say no one cares about the. I'm a, I'm gonna steal a joke from DC because I've I've started this trend myself and Ron after is he from told Memphis. me. We, I am from Memphis. Memphis. What's in Memphis? Yeah. Nothing we got, we got but the barbecue. Pyramids. What is the pyramid? <laughs> First of all, our barbecue is better than y'all's. Okay, oh. well we're not gonna do and our fried chicken oh. and our fried Atlanta, fish. New Orleans, the place with the best food. We have great seafood. We have beignets. Do y'all have beignets in Memphis? Didn't think so. Y'all got jazz from us. No, 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 sir. No, 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 no. You know what? You know what? You know what? What's that? We'll save it for another podcast. But I want to jump back to you. So Tyler, so started in Brooklyn, went to Kentucky, and you came down here to follow track. So I'm guessing Xavier has a lot better of a track, and they gave you a scholarship too. Okay, so. How do you like New Orleans so far? Is it your first time down here? My first time down here. I, my first time was last Friday. That was my first time ever being down here. And with me, I like just going places. I don't. I haven't been down here for orientation. Well, not orientation. Like over the summer, you know, people came down here for school and everything. I didn't do that. I just came first day for mm. orientation and just, just basically jumped in it. I like it here. It's like a lot of stuff to do that I haven't done yet. I've been to Bourbon Street for just to see how it was. Mm -mm -mm. That's <laughs> how we. That's that street is popping though. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, this it, this, it is this, like it. It was does Memphis have a Bourbon Street? We have a Beale Street. Oh, okay. It's like, Beale Street is like Bourbon Street, is except it's only three blocks. But everything that's on Bourbon Street, wow. Everything that's on Bourbon Street is within those three blocks. Are there hand grenades in Memphis? What? We, You'll learn about the hand grenade. You'll, you'll learn drink. about that. It's, it's a drink. It's a drink. It's a drink. <laughs> it's a drink. <laughs> now, I will say, I have not been down to Bill Street since I turned 21. Mm -hmm. And Bill Street is covered with bars, so I haven't really had a reason to be For down there. For three blocks. For three blocks. That ain't nothing. Three. But back to Tyler. So have you, have, like, have you had your track practice yet? No, we start the end of September. That's okay, because it's hot out here, so I'm I don't gonna, want yeah. you. I'm still adjusting to the heat. I am not I'm going to say, come from Brooklyn. I'm going to know. Like, I thought, I thought New York weather was bipolar. Mm. Down here is so bipolar. It will rain and get hotter. That's so weird to me. I'm not used to that. Well, like, well let me tell you. Humidity. A, a, as bad as it is right now, this is not as bad as it gets. So just prepare yourself. No, he's lying. This is as bad as it gets. Because okay. in the beginning of the summer, it was not like this. It was bearable heat. Right now, it's like you walk outside, you're just ready to... Get in the casket. Like, okay, no, she's from the city. I'm telling you, as a tra as a fellow transplant, yeah. uh, I remember my first time touring uh, New Orleans, and I was sweating the entire time walking down here, and I felt so out of place. Cause I saw everybody else walking by. You know, they all used to it and everything. I was here like dying. It's like the admin right now. I remember I came out the airport. <laughs> And the transition from cold to hot, it wasn't hot, it was just humid. Yes. Mm. And I started sweating bullets. Yes. It was crazy. I just you can't, can't escape it. Not at all. Well, you're going to get used to it. And we're glad you came to Xavier because yes. you know, Woo. one of the best HBCUs. No. The best HBCU. The best. X, 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 You You learned the dance yet? The line dance we got? Rolling in the deep? Yeah, no, that Okay. I saw y'all doing the other one. I need to learn that one myself. Okay, but uh, let's talk about being back to school. So, like I said, me and Princey are the seniors of 2019. Yep, 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 yep. But you, not only are you a transfer, you're also a junior. So you're not even getting the full Xavier experience. You're coming in right in the middle of it. What has been your experience at Xavier so far? Um, the 
the biggest one I had with the orientation with the period, they gave me a lot of like, I want to say, uh, perspective on Xavier. 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 I'm sorry. I have to get used to that too. It's okay. I came down here it's okay. Xavier for the longest and I came to the school and said Xavier. Z. Not yeah. Like, yeah. There you go. But yeah, they gave me a lot of like different looks here. Like, how do I explain it? Um, they gave like, you a good feel to the school. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And it's like, they, they're really nice and they're really like welcoming and I like that because I don't want, I don't want to keep bad mouth in my old school but it was different. Also, it was a PWI. Mm. So it was, oh. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Now you can oh, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. So it was different, but here it's very welcoming, and they really want to help you, and I, I get that from, I got that from Jump from the start I came down here. Mm. So, yeah. yeah, that is a, a big difference. Like, well, just being at HBCU, being around fellow black people, you know, it's it was kind of jarring for me, and I didn't even come from a PWI. I came from a majority black high school. Mm-hmm. But being with like even more black people who all want your benefit, and then having most of the teachers, uh, at least in my department, be black as well, yeah. you know, it's just a kind of different level of engagement. Would you agree? Right. I think that for at least MassCom, we actually have the most amount of black instructors, black professors, black PhDs, and pretty much all of them except for one mm-hmm. is a woman. And I've, I've noticed that about our department compared to others, like mm-hmm. the sciences. And of course, you know, it's wonderful to have like a colorful array of instructors, mm-hmm. but it is amazing to say I'm going to an HBCU where my professor kind of looks like me as well. Right, definitely like you. Now you brought yeah. up a good point. Like I said, most of our professors are women which kind of coincides with the ratio on campus. Most mm. other people come here women. So as a uh, male, yeah. correct, mm-hmm. um, how is it being in a campus that's like 70% women? I'm used to being around females all the time. Not that I be around females all the time. It's just that <laughs> like, I have a lot of female friends. You know, mm-hmm. so being around females all the time is nothing new to me. But it's different. See, it's, it's good that... Different. It's good that Tyler came his junior year mm-hmm. because most of the time, oh. boys come to Xavier okay. freshman year. Right. So let me let me t- tell they you. Don't so, find their way out. Let me tell you. So you are the fortunate one to be in DP. Yeah. Not o- not only is it your first year here, but it's the first year where the all the dorms were full, and you still made it to DP. So congratulations for you. Thank you, thank you. And but, for people who don't know, Deporis is our co-ed dorm here on campus. Mm-hmm. St. Martin Deporis? St. Martin Deporis, yeah, Martin. Martin there yes. we go. Yes, and then we have the LLC, which is for sophomores and upper other upperclassmen. Right. Um, Females which, only, though. Women only. Then, you then have we have freshmen. K- in KD, Catherine yes. Drexel dorm, and then the worst of the worst of the worst of the war, St. Mike's Penitentiary. I just ask that you oh, don't man. go to uh, KD. Please don't Tyler, go. Tyler, don't go to KD. Well, even if you do go to KD, don't go to Club KD. What's Club? Oh, you mean the, the, the front of KD? See, I'm, I'm, gl- I'm glad you already know. Yeah, you don't. I heard about that, um, I think, a few days ago. I'm like, okay, yeah, I don't even step it over there. There's, you know. There is always every year. It never fails. A- every year. Club KD is, is a thing. I remember uh, orientation. It was every uh, two days ago. They was out there playing hide and seek. Mm-hmm. And it was just a, yeah. It was okay, we didn't play hide and seek. Yeah, it was playing hide and seek, and I'm like... Why? But I guess they do that. I guess that's a thing. No, yes. no. No, I think like that they were just bored. Yeah, 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 I'm gonna say. Now I will say I do kind of miss being in a freshman, just having more of that kind of like childlike innocence. Yeah. You know, I, 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 I mean, I feel like everyone when they first became a freshman thought they were a little growner now. You know, I'm 18. I'm up here with all these other college students. On the other side of the spectrum, I'm looking back like, no, y'all really some young kids, mm-hmm. like. Y'all some kids, Yeah, for you real. don't realize how old you are until you start going around kids mm-hmm. who are like, three. I'm not going to call the students kids now, but they're it's just we're in a different No, way. no. Young adults. They're kids, especially people. Listen to all the other kids. <laughs> look, 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 I'm going to tell you, I have so many horror stories from the mics of people just being foolish, of being kids. Now, I'm going to tell you, my friends, and these are some of my friends to this day, they used to uh, have a game every Saturday night, mm-hmm. uh, Hangar Wars. Where everyone get all the hangers in that closet, and they'll be beaming each other down the hallways at like three o'clock in the morning, and you 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 just hear hangers hitting your door, going down the hallway, people screaming, and I never participated because that's just some. I had work in the morning, so I, I never did that. But uh, that's some of the some of the childish stuff that happened. That sounds like something boys would do. Was that fun for them? Like that like. Did they find joy in throwing hangers at each other? Uh, apparently they did because they did it for like three months straight every <laughs> wow, Saturday night. Okay. 
man, wow, yeah. Wow, boys really do mature pretty slow. Uh, uh, do you want to talk about everything oh. that happened in KD, which you were lucky enough to not be in, miss? Oh, uh, well, I'm a commuter student, mm -hmm. so I don't know much about what happens in the uh, uh, Catherine Drexel dorm, mm -hmm. but I hope it's only good things that St. Catherine Drexel would want us to do. Have you ever been to a male's public restroom? No. Why would I go in a male's public restroom? I, I don't know what, you, what your life has been like. I just no, well, what? just just letting you know, whatever your thought of what a male's public restroom looks like, let me tell you from experience, KD's restroom is worse. Not that the mics is any better, but KD's is worse. I heard stories already. I don't want to. I don't want to go into detail because they're very uh, explicit. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. yeah, just... tell us off air. I love yeah, tea. I'm gonna say you love the tea. <laughs> Okay. Well, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I want to. I want to know the tea. You know, we like exclusives over here. But first, I want to know how you feel going to your senior year. Oh my gosh, senior year, super scary yet super rewarding yet super scary. Mm -hmm. Only because you know, after four years here, I didn't realize it until like yesterday. There is so much mature, maturing that goes on between your in your four years in college mm -hmm. and though you don't recognize it you don't you don't really recognize it until you sit down and say oh wow I really have grown up mm -hmm. in these ways but yet there are also some signs that I feel like in this point of our lives we're all questioning like what's next so for a lot of people right now it's either you're going to test to go to your next school your next higher education you're going to mm -hmm. do your master's you want to go pursue uh, your law degree or your doctorate degree or whatever it may be so I feel like that's where everyone is right now. And I think everyone kind of, but though you still may have that question dwindling in the air, at this point in your life, you understand what you are and are not going to tolerate from yourself and other people. Mm -hmm. And I feel like you don't understand that until you reach this mark in your like 20s, where mm -hmm. you understand, I am taking this and I'm not taking this, and this is how I'm going to pursue my life. What is but, but there's still so many other open questions, which is very interesting. Sorry, I didn't want to catch no, you. No, go ahead, go ahead. I mean, to, to cut you off, but there's so many other open-ended questions that we still have, and I was talking to a couple of my friends, and they were saying the same thing. You know, when you're younger and you see someone who's 21, 22 years old, you think, wow, they have it all together. Like, they're grown. Like, they got it all. Mm. And then you get in this spot, and you get in this place, and you say, actually, that's not the case at all. I'm still very much so trying to find the way. And then I realized that that's going to be the rest of life. And that's 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 what keeps us living. It's it's always the question of what's next, what's next, what's next. All these adults that we see around us that we thought our had all together, they're really just twenty one year olds just figuring it out. Right. That, that's really it. And I, I think about my mom, mama, all the things she used to do for me, and like now living on my own, my own apartment. Right. Let me tell you, this is some of the most humbling things I have ever gone through. Yep. Bills are humbling. Groceries are humbling. <laughs> Man, and you, but so you but you still living in the dorm, so you got you got a little wild for it. Right. How is it for you though, Ron? Your first two days. Uh going into your senior year. Man, it, it it's it's stressful, I'm not even gonna lie to you. Um, because for the last three years I was always thinking about, oh, you know, I, I have I have until I graduate, you know, to get things done, you know, or I have a little more time to get this done. And I realized going into my senior year, that's still a, a long checklist of, checklist of things that I haven't gotten done that I need to get done before I graduate, you know. I'm not going get, to get into them all, but I really have to be on my stuff now. Like, I can't dilly-dally. Um, did I just say dilly-dally? Dilly-dally. Dilly-dally. Can't dilly-dally. Um, I have to be on it now. And I remember uh, before I came to college, you know, professors and parents used to tell me, like, oh, you know, ain't nobody going to tell you to get up in the morning. Ain't nobody going to tell you to do this or that. You got to figure out how to do it yourself. And coming to school, I was like, okay, yeah, I can wake myself up to go to class. You know, I can make myself do my homework. But it's a different level when, when you have to say, oh, no, I have to go and schedule an interview for a job that I want. Right. Oh, no, now I actually have to figure out how to get to this job when I don't have a car. Like, I need to figure out the bus schedule. Oh, I need to figure out my registration. I can't call my mama. I have to figure this out myself. Like that's a whole lot more stress that you didn't realize that your parents just took on because you're a kid. You know, right? It's everything simpler. So, 
Everything is way simpler, and that's funny that you say that, because even though I still commute and I live at home with my family, my mom, I told her, I was like, I'm going on a job interview, I mean, actually an internship interview, and she was like, when did you apply to an internship? And it becomes a point in your life where you're like, I didn't realize, I don't tell you everything that I've been right. applying, like, applying for and trying to do, because, you know, mm -hmm. I'm just older and I'm trying to figure it out on my own. And I'm still it's different for you life. because, like you said, you are community, you still do live with your parents, mm -hmm. you know. Me, like, being miles away from my folks, uh, I don't have any family down here. Right. So, like, my folks, I, I often forget, like, how drawing is for my mama to not know about every single detail of my life, you yes. know. Because um, I'm over here just living my life, doing things, and I know she's proud of me because she's telling me that all the time, and I'm proud of myself for some of the things I've done. But just realizing, like, oh, really, I haven't talked to you in, like, two weeks, and I, you, you see me every okay, single that's day. That's a long time, though, Ron. Two weeks? Well, well, okay, so I, 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 we do text every now and then, but I might... Ron, you got to show your mama some love. I do what love my doing, mama. Bro? I do. Shout out to you, mama. I love you. Tyler, I couldn't make you out. How, how, how many times do you talk to your mom, Tyler? Almost every day. See? To be oh. That's how it should be. Yeah. Moms are. Day, you have to talk to her. She has to know that you're better. Are you okay? You know, you're still alive, you know? So. We're well, good for you. Do better than me. You know, <laughs> apparently I don't love my mama, even though I do love you. I just don't talk to you that much. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, <laughs> but some of that comes from the fact that I want to be more independent. I want to learn how to do things myself. I don't want to have to go to her every single time I need something. And what 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 is this? What, I'm sorry. So I often check Twitter even when I'm doing things live, and I saw something that I actually don't want to read right now on the air because it's not okay. I mean, it's 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 not okay. I, I, we're not going to read that on the air. We're we not. Don't need the FBI on us. We're not. But you know what, bro? Um, live your best life. <laughs> um. Um, I, ho I hope you got a good aim. Anyway, <laughs> um, you know, you know, you know, you know, like he, he's entering an archery contest, you know, and I want him to win. You know, I hope he has a good aim. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? But uh, right, right, but uh, <laughs> but uh, it's good that y'all talk to your parents. Tyler, you talk to your parents as much as you do. Um, and you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna start call calling my mama some more. You know, at least twice a week. At least twice a week. Yeah. Now, I will say that if I don't hit her up. She will call me. Mm -hmm. um, so I do talk to her at least once a week. It's just that she's usually the one calling me. And I, I literally, I just go a few days and I forget, oh, dang, it's been a week since I, I called you. And I haven't noticed because I'm so busy doing X, Y, and Z. Yeah. You know? She and understands, I, though. Right. Well, uh, anything else about Xavier that interests you um, or surprised you when you first came down here? That surprised me about Xavier. I mean, you've you only been here for like a week or two, but. Yeah. Um... Not off the top of my head. Um, can I say what surprises me about Xavier go right ahead. now? I'm sorry to cut no, you okay. off, Tyler. Fine. You can keep thinking about your I'm answer. Right I'm so proud of my HBCU because over the past four years, we have built the new um, the new chapel. Mm -hmm. So we have a new chapel on campus. We have the uh, audit. Well, I think they built the 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 big audit. What is it called? Sorry, the one across the canal. Uh, yeah, the convocation. Look at that. We don't even know that. Convocation, <laughs> the convocation center, that's been built for a while, but they finally completed the pedestrian bridge. Finally. Oh, my God. Finally. Finally. Um, they've created more sidewalks, better lighting on campus. Right. Xavier has done many wonderful things. Mm. But, but today, ah, I was dying in the admin. Oh. Administration building on the third floor mm. for about Four good hours Ooh. because there is no air conditioning. There is no air conditioning on Xavier's main campus. We're right now in Xavier's um, at Xavier South, so there's good cool air. Like I feel like I can breathe again. Mm. But I've been sitting on the third floor in the in the administration building, breathing hot steam, and I could feel myself just almost almost completely about to faint. You know, I, I feel you on that, too. It was, it was miserable. And I'm texting friends who were in pharmacy school. They were, they were saying that they thought they were going to faint as well. The floor was slippery from the humidity. That's how bad my the admin my was. My professor slipped coming into class today. Yes, That's, it was miserable. Ooh, that was crazy. And I'm not, I don't know what the reason is. I don't know what, I don't know why the air isn't working. But Xavier, please turn on this air. Pay, 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 please pay energy, please. Whatever you got to do. Please, whatever you have to do. I'm going to say. 
but other than that, my my institution has done wonderful things over the last four years. Mm. But we're on the second day, and I thought I was going to pass out in class. I'm saying, but you know what? Uh, I I know Xavier gonna get it together because you know they love out, they love us. And I'm interested in seeing the other things they do. I see that I hear as Xavier South redoing the parking lot. Yes. Um, Which is another reason to complain, but we're not going to do that because they've been working on the parking lot since the summer. Mm -hmm. And I understand that it rained a lot this summer. Mm -hmm. It rained almost every single day. Really? It just kind of stopped yeah. raining almost every single day. So that's why they couldn't complete the parking lot on time. Mm -hmm. So it probably won't be done for a while. Yeah, well, it, they, it's looking like it's getting a lot closer. I saw some cars on, on the Instead of just dirt, it's some concrete down there now. Wait, uh, which parking lot? So this is the parking lot uh, right in front of the south building, or right behind. No, technically it's right behind the oh, south right building. The yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. It so was, it was a teach. It was a teacher's. It is going to still be it, but a teacher's parking lot. But they're like renovating it. Mm -hmm. They put the new sidewalk. There was a lot. There was a lot of potholes uh, in the parking lot. It wasn't easy to get in. Um, people used to always like, get trapped coming coming in, so they needed they been needing to redo it. Yes. Now, Xavier, after you get done with that, do you mind putting another you know uh, entrance into the L parking lot so that people can actually use that parking lot? Yeah. Because well, that's where the L the L girls. So you can't just park there. You, yes, you can. I thought it was for the L students. I said, oh, if, you, if you got a permit, you can park. Oh, I had no idea. I thought it was for girls. But I'm happy because we are getting a Chick-fil-A, but I thought the Chick-fil-A would have been done by now. But anyways, you can't you can't get everything you want. I know. And we're getting a Starbucks. Exactly. Bonus. I'm going to say. That's not even started yet. They didn't even start construction yet, I think. I heard um, Chick-fil-A is supposed to open around October. Yes. yes. I'm waiting for October 2018. Yes. I say you can use all my rush bucks and all my gold nuggets over there. Wow, I will lose both of your rush bucks and both of your gold nuggets because I don't have any. Oh, you. you got, you got. Yeah, you. yeah see, that's why like Tyler like he understands. Yeah, I, I just need fries. I'm pescatarian, so I don't even eat. I just want the fries. Isn't that where you walk across the street? Shut up. Oh my gosh! <laughs> everyone keeps making fun of me. So everyone, I became a pescatarian in July. Oh no, that's that's the thing. That's a new religion, right? Jo you know what? I'm not about to mess up. <laughs> I do not eat meat. I eat fish. That's that's literally the only thing. I don't eat meat. I eat fish. Shut up. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it makes a lot of sense. Okay, so it started off pretty much as a fast. And then I was like, you know what? I don't need this anymore. Like, I just don't want meat anymore. So, I just eat fish when I really need protein. I think I probably might have to get some fish tonight because I really do feel a little less energized. Also, I was in the heat. But, uh, yeah, I don't need it. And it really came from a story that I was reading. I want to say it was um, Bridges Bridges Arbidia. Mm -hmm. And that. she said, yes, I told this to Ron, and he was just like, oh, okay, whatever. But she said that she doesn't like to eat anything that was killed in fear. And ever since she said, like, ever since I read that, it kind of stuck with me even as a kid. And it, I don't think it's in the movie, but I know it's in the book. And ever, like, it was, it's been a long time coming. And now I'm old enough to buy my own food, so, like, I can say I'm not going to eat meat. And my parents can't really put up a fight. At first, I couldn't do that as a kid. I'm from the South. My parents believe in Popeyes. So, like... I don't eat meat that was killed in fear, but I still eat fish. But the, see, the thing is, I have to, I have to have something. Like otherwise, I'm not gonna make it. Don't, ain't you got your red beans and rice? But, what about tofu? Hey, do you got tofu? I've never. See, I just like seafood though. Like Actually, I just like shrimp. Like I know I can go without eating a McDonald's hamburger. I don't even eat McDonald's. Okay, you, you make it seem like that's the end all be all of a burger though. That's not even real meat. Yeah, you know this exactly. That's why I don't eat it anymore. And me, by me taking meat out of my out of my diet, I'm not even tempted to go to Burger King. Not tempted to go to rallies. Like there's no temptation anymore. Well, you know, I, I know I don't eat. I it. would agree with that because I do know when you cut out like and chicken canes. and beef from your. No, that's hard. I'm not gonna lie. I love canes. I got a box of canes waiting for me need, after this interview. I just need the bread. I just <laughs> need the bread. Go ahead. You don't like canes? Get out of here. Yeah. Ah! It, okay, I had it for the first time when I first came down here, and it was good, but, like, you can't, like, let it sit out for a long time, you know what I mean? You can't, you can't like, it's not good, I left over. Can I, can I ask you something? Have you ever been to Zaxby's? Zaxby's oh, is it. nasty. Never Zaxby's is not good. Zaxby's, of, oh, Zaxby's yeah. chicken tastes Stop like lying on my podcast, it's Princey. True. It's true. Zaxby's chicken tastes like rubber. Okay. I know it this. And, and the bread is not it. as I'm good as... It. The bread is not as good as Cane's. Don't no, let them... No, their bread is good. Cane's bread, Cane's bread is good. And that's all I need in my life is Cane's bread. 
Okay. I don't need their chicken. Look, there's no, I don't think there's a Zaxby's down here, but if you ever go traveling, like I know you like to travel, so the find a Zaxby's. Zax, the closest Zaxby's to New Orleans is actually in Baton Rouge. So it's a, it's about 45, 45 minutes. minutes. Okay. So that's the closest Zaxby's. So go there. Never go there. And then okay. tell me the truth, whether or not cane sauce is the exact same thing as Zaxby's sauce. I promise you the exact same thing. It's the same sauce, but the meat is not the same. The yeah, meat, right. Zaxby's the, the is better. The cane's meat. No, 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 no. <laughs> Though I don't eat meat anymore, the cane's meat is really nicely battered. Mm -hmm. The Zaxby's meat tastes like... Is that because they killed it in a more humane way? Yeah. It wasn't killed in fear? It was definitely killed in fear. So I don't eat it. I just don't eat canes no, anymore, but... Have you um, guys ever heard of Indies? No. No. It's a, it's a... Probably only in Kentucky. It's very good. Like, it's just like canes and Zaxby's, like, put together. They have all type chicken, chicken tenders... All of it. Chicken. Mm. Chicken. 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 Like, chicken. Like, there's only like three things on the Cane's menu. True. Yeah. yeah. But it's very good. I yeah. would say it's better than Cane's not to really try to argue with you right now, but yeah. I can't argue with you because I didn't Never try the other it. place. Yeah. But I could believe there could be a better Cane's. I'm not going to say that. Honestly, every, can, Cane's is nice. Cane's is like a, a nice, like, uh, I want to say comfort food. I would say a cheating food. Yeah. You eat that once yeah. in a while. Mm -hmm. I mean, even like me, you eat about maybe like once a week. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't do that. It's bad for your cholesterol, you know, it cocked up the systems, right. but uh, it's, it's still pretty good. Not as good as Axe Business. I'm sorry that we, we like ventured the conversation <laughs> from like school to like food. I guess it's easy, but I have a quick question for y'all. Going into the semester, did you look up your professors on Rate My Professor? No. I have no. actually I've never used that site. Yeah, I have. I'm guilty. Never mind. So, what do you think of your professors? I love my don't, professors. Don't say no names. I'm not going to say any <laughs> names. <laughs> I love my professors. I did not look anybody up this semester, but in the past semesters as a freshman, this is just a word to the wise. When you're a freshman going into college or even a sophomore, whatever, if you're going, if you're going to, you know, a, go and register for some classes, you might want to see who is about that life and who isn't about that life about giving you an A for yeah. uh, not too much. And I'm not saying don't slide through school, but um, there are some the, some professors out there. If you're not even writing a 500 page uh -huh. word essay, you're you're probably not going to pass their class, True. and you kind of don't want True. that. True, but 500 words isn't that bad. 500 but, page. Oh, uh, yeah. it was an exaggeration, Ron. No, it's, it's, some people do it was that. An exaggeration. But you know, yeah, I I, I would suggest go uh, to was it rate my professor? Rate my professor. I'm gonna tell you, I, I have one story about ever going on that site. Mm -hmm. I didn't even go on it. Mm -hmm. One of my female friends went on it. Mm -hmm. And why she went on it? Because she heard that one of the teachers was fine. What? Yeah. And, then, and, she, and, she, and she went down the whole comments list. It's like, he's a nice teacher. But oh my God, he's so, he's so beautiful. Oh my God. My ovaries are just ovulating so much. What? Yeah, that's, yeah, look on. The professor here? Yes. I'm, I'm curious. Maybe. I don't know. But. And uh, my, my one other comment on that was, uh, I did have a professor ask if we looked her up, mm. and she was so snooty about it. I'm not gonna say who it was. She probably had bad ratings on there, which is why. Well, she she just look, she's asked in general. She said, "Oh, did you guys look me up on Google before you came in here?" We like, no, we we, we didn't. Um, apparently, you know, uh, she was a great athlete, mm -hmm. um, and was rare right now, and won some awards for it. Um, so, congratulations to her. I'm sorry, ma'am. I don't care that much. I just want to get through this class. Right, right, right. Uh, but congratulations right. on your on your accomplishments. Uh, That's hilarious. Yeah. So, y'all, do y'all have any uh, advice y'all want to give off to any of the freshmen listening before we head off? I definitely do. Do not get caught up with these females. <laughs> no! Don't, 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 do it. That's hilarious. I have, I don't, not even names, I have some friends, um, freshman friends, they look for them left and right. I'm like, don't, wow. that's how you get caught up and that's how you mess up here. And I already know it's a, it's a hard school, like, to, you know, mm -hmm. get a handle of. And I know from my freshman and sophomore year, is it was hard trying to transition from high school to college and everybody, you know, being on your own and, like, having nobody tell you what to do, basically. So yeah, just man. I, I'm, let me say, I'm agree with you. I'm a second that all y'all, all y'all freshmen listening, please like don't don't be at Club KD. Be in your books, right? I, I've I've seen it myself. Like men have a hard time at this school for exactly that reason, and mine's not in the right place. When I first came here, there were 300 guys in my freshman class. 
Um, this might probably not a correct number, but it's like forty now. Wow. Well, however many it is, I can I know them all by name. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> exactly. So please, please, like, just don't get caught up. Um, Prince, I would you? say, girls. Don't get caught up on these boys. That was actually going to be my suggestion. Because I feel like as, you know, females, you know, you leave the hive and then you try to test the waters. These boys are testing the waters too. And 10 times out of nine, they're testing the waters with multiple people. So you just be you. You'll find the right guy eventually. Ain't nobody about to get married unless you're from like a small country town. Yeah, I have a lot of stories on that. But you ain't about to, you, you, unless you want to get married, good for you. And if you find the one, good for you. But ten times out of nine, just keep walking. And all these uh, <laughs> all these people holding on to your long-distance relationships, I wish you the best of luck. Yes. But I'll see you in a year. No. No, 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 no. Long-distance can work. everybody just stay in your books. Stay yes. in your books. Please stay, stay focused. Don't you, don't be going to UC too much. The library is right the other way. But have it, have your fun when you can. Don't have too much fun. Just keep, get your work done before you go to the park. You're a student first. Yes. Yeah, but it's like, you know what? I think this was a pretty good inaugural episode of the Kickback. I think so too. I'm I like a, this. I like this title, Brian. You, you like you like it. You like it. Yes. I'm gonna say. Yeah. I'm gonna say. I, do, do, I got it from a. Actually, this is y'all's word. For the kind of pre-game parties that y'all have, mm, you know, know. say in, in my city we used to call it a set. Oh. Yeah, so y'all call it kickbacks, mm. pre-games. If you don't know what any of that means, you don't need to know. Don't worry about it. Um, stay in your books, kids. But yeah, I have to thank y'all for coming and being my first I'm episode. I'm sure everybody went to a kickback before. I mean, everybody's gone to a, a set before, yeah. Yeah. But uh, if you don't know what it is, you know, I'm not gonna explain it to you. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, but thank y'all so much, Princey. I'm gonna have, I'm definitely have to have you back in time. I'm definitely have to have you back again. Yeah, so stay tuned. I'm glad you did. Stay tuned next time. Uh, I don't know who we're gonna have. You know, it's always someone new next time. But I think this week we're gonna have Leonard and Donovan come on my show. We're gonna talk some music. Talk a little Kanye West. Boo. Talk a little J. Cole. Boo. I'm just kidding. I like J. Cole. I'm going to say, talk a little <laughs> Nicki Minaj. Uh, we'll talk about all the foolishness going on right now, especially around the VMA. So stay tuned. Thank y'all. This is the episode of Kickback, and I'll see y'all another time.